Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 18th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Swindon, England. Xavier did a little study of DNS text records. He looked at 300,000 different text records that he had collected and looked at, well, what's the content of these DNS text records? Turns out that uh, most of them are used for some variation of email filtering, like SPF records, or in some cases also to verify domain ownership. But probably most interesting were exploits that Xavier found in these text records. There were a couple different cross-site scripting attacks and also a SQL injection attempt. This, of course, does target systems that will, for example, display these text records in a web console or insert them into a SQL database. The use of DNS uh, to deliver exploits isn't exactly new, so this is something you definitely should be ready for if you are reading DNS text records or any DNS record automatically. Host names, for example, while they are more limited in the characters they should contain are not perfectly safe. And of course, you could always have someone deliver a non-standard compliant response. So for a quick summary and what these exploit records were all about, uh, just check out Xavier's diary from today. And when we're talking about Linux malware, we're usually talking about malware attacking servers, for example, via popular web application vulnerabilities. So it's kind of exciting that Intiser, a security company, found desktop malware for Linux. They dubbed this particular malware Evil Gnome. It does come disguised as a GNOME extension. The purpose of this malware appears to be essentially spyware. It has capabilities to, for example, take screenshots. Also, it is able to exfiltrate newly created files. A keystroke logging facility that is part of this particular malware doesn't appear to be fully finished yet, which makes it easier belief that this particular malware is still in its development stages and and it is founded on VirusTotal, so it may have been uploaded to VirusTotal by mistake, or maybe the author or someone associated with the author wanted to check if it is being detected by any existing antivirus engines. And of course, it's not. An additional sort of artifact that suggests that this malware hasn't been finished yet they used a script called makeself.sh in order to create a self-extractable compressed tar archive from a directory that will then expand into the malware. And they left quite a bit of uh, metadata inside the file, including, for example, the name of the home directory, the name of the user creating uh, this particular directory, and a number of other pieces of metadata that were included in the archive. Based on this data and also common command and control structure, Intiser suggests that this malware was created by the Russian Gamaretin group. This group has been active since 2013. It usually distributes its malware via spare phishing and has in the past been involved with attacks against the Ukrainian government. And CoFans came across an interesting phishing attack targeting American Express customers. This particular phishing email makes it more difficult for email gateways and the like uh, to detect that the email is malicious by taking advantage of the base HTML tag. The link itself that the user is asked to click on is a relative link, so it does not include a protocol or a host name. Now, Typically, with relative links like this, the current URL is prepended to the relative link. But in this case, the base tag is being used to provide a different URL base that is being used to rewrite these links. And this is how the user is then being redirected to the malicious site. 
Well, apparently the attacker did spend some thought on how to design the HTML of the email. Lucky for the victims in some ways, the grammar and spelling of the email itself is pretty bad. So it hopefully isn't too difficult to figure out that this is not a legitimate email. And then just a quick reminder, in about six months on January 14th, Microsoft will cease extended support for Windows 7. So that's when you will expect the last free security updates for Windows 7. So probably a good time now to think about moving to a more modern operating system. Well, and that's it for today. And as a reminder, I will be teaching in Boston our Security 503 Intrusion Detection in-depth class in about two weeks. Your next chance to take a class with me after that is the Defending Web Application class in Brussels first week of September. And as usual, you can find a more detailed calendar of classes I teach in the show notes. Thanks for listening. This is it for today and talk to you again tomorrow.